Yeah, it was, it was a tough game, a game we had the lead, and it was hard coming away without the result, but um, we're ready going forward for the game Wednesday. We have a game Saturday, important oh. game, and we focus on the game Wednesday and get the two goals that we need away from home. Leo, more than that, it's even that it was everything so fast. You went from who's Leo in New York, and then short term, and then long term, and now you are part of a big, big team. How do you feel? How everything you know go through your mind and your family and your friends? Yeah, it's been it's been exciting. I mean, it's been I feel like it's, it happened so fast. I haven't even processed everything yet, but I'm just focused on playing soccer and doing what I love. So exciting times for me and my family. Did they ask you for a lot of tickets already? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <your friends? laughs> just my family. Cops Messi. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, everyone asked that, of course. Leo, uh, hi, I'm Michelle Kaufman from Nine Herald. Um, my brother actually and my nephew all are Boca United people, so they mm. they know from. Uh, no, no, Boca United. Uh, Boca United. <laughs> the youth club in Boca Raton with Eric Eichmann. Uh, if you could just talk about just your journey of, you know, as a kid playing there to coming here. I mean, what has that been like for you growing up as all the other kids that were growing up in Boca playing in that youth league and ending up here? How, how was your journey here? Yeah, I played at Boca for two years and then I left the Philadelphia Union, played a year there for the academy and then got the chance to come down to Miami when the, the team opened up down here. And I played here for a year and then left for school for three and a half and then came back here. I always knew I wanted to come back here. It's where my family is, it's where I was raised, and I love it here. How about the decision to go to college? I mean, what what went into that decision? You were already kind of on the path to here, and then you chose to go to college. Can you just tell us about that decision? Um, it wasn't very particular. I just I thought it was the best option for me at the moment, and that's why I took it. If you could fill in the blanks at the beginning, Born in Sao Paulo, I, how long were you there? Were you there to develop an affinity for a, a team or anything like that? The transition to here, and I guess now not just playing alongside some of the greatest you ever played, but I mean, like you said, two weeks ago you're trying to make a name for yourself. Now you're playing in a CONCACAF Champions Cup game. Yeah. Um, I lived in Brazil for 13 years, and then I moved to Delray Beach here in South Florida, and yeah, I mean it's. It's crazy because when the club started, I was here in the beginning. I went to preseason with the first team in the beginning, and it, it wasn't anything like this. And then I came back from college three and a half years later, and you have players that I used to play in video games with, like yesterday. It's just a crazy feeling. How much can you learn from these players as a young player? You learn a lot. I mean, you're watching these guys do different movements that you've never seen before that make them the great players that they are. It's the little things that they do, and it's just amazing to see it in person. How much has it changed uh, with the three years and a half you're talking about? About the, the mayhem, maybe around the, the club? Can you talk about it? Yeah, I mean, we have some of the best players in history playing here, which before we didn't, and before we were still a new team getting used to being in the MLS, getting new players together, and now we have like a baseline for our team, and I think it's just everything's clicking together. ¿Cómo han sido tus conversaciones con el Tata? Parece que te vio desde que te vio, te gustaste, le pareciste, te llamó al primer equipo y ahora te firmaron a, a, a un nuevo contrato. ¿Cómo han sido tus conversaciones con él? 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 happy to broadcast your first game from New York and it was a rainy day, everything was wrong. And then it says, oh, who's this Leo? Another Leo in the team. What were your first impressions when Tata says, you go in, man, now? Well, I, I went on the loan because I thought the international uh, players that left were, were gone and there was some space on the roster. And then my name got called, I think it was like the 55th minute. And I was like, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> and I just went there and focused on playing. And, it's unfortunate that we got the, the loss, but it was a happy day, a happy moment for me. They give you an opportunity to play again, yeah. and now you are part of the team in the long term. Is that a dream come true for yeah. a kid from Brazil? Yeah, it is. Your whole life you work for this, and when you get here, it does feel, feel good. I want to ask you about the game the other night. Um, you know, very emotional game, spicy game. Uh, how did you feel going out? into that environment, you know, what was it like for you? I mean, that's very different from what you probably were used to. I mean, I, I liked it. I loved it. It was competitive. We, you have to be in 100% every play, and that's where I want to be. To build on what he was asking, uh, not just South Paulo, but also in many ways South Florida, I mean, the melting pot. 
and not just specifically you, but now closing in on double digits of guys that are coming up either through the academy or Inter Miami too. Part of that pipeline, I mean, you're, you're hearing Messi, Busquets, Alba, all, all these great superstars that are coming in, Suarez, etc. But they're still making room for the local kids coming through the system. How do you think that feels, and what does that look like for the future? Well, I, I, it's hard for me to say what it looks like for the future, but there's definitely an opportunity. I mean, the Club Valley is growing talent here and values the talent there is in South Florida. I mean, I'm an example of it. I came from the academy, went to school, and then they took me back. So there's space here for young kids looking to chase their dreams. Is there a bond among the young group that all came up together? Is there like a bond among the young guys? Yeah, I mean, most of the guys I played here that are on the first team that have been here for three, four years, I played in the academy with, so it's, it's a special bond. Now, how can helping the game um, on tomorrow help you guys in terms of, you know, maybe getting some of that confidence back, looking forward to the second leg in the career? Yeah, it's a very important game. We need to get the three points in the league. We tied against New York City, and then tomorrow's an important game. We need to get three points and build that momentum going into Monterey and playing away from home. How would you compare the atmosphere around football here in Miami compared to other cities in the States? Yeah, well, I was in college in Virginia, and I mean, soccer is not the main sport. Football is football, baseball, basketball are the sports that get the most attention. So here in South Florida, I think soccer is one of the biggest sports, so it's a good feeling. Building on the youth, if we could, just that bond that you were talking about. When everyone went back into the dressing room and David's there, what's the interaction, what's the feeling? I, I'm sure there's probably some maybe harsh words, but at the same point, he's a young kid. What happened? Yeah, well, I after the game, I got called for the doping test, so I wasn't in the locker room. Like, I, as soon as I walked into the tunnel, they grabbed me and took me into a room, so I, didn't, I wasn't there for anything. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess but, in training or just even just in... Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a learning moment for all the young players. It's You learn and you move on, you know? There's not much you can do about it now, but you just got to learn and keep, keep improving. Atmosphere-wise, what are your expectations for this one? I mean, I expect a hostile environment. I expect a lot of energy, a lot of singing, screaming, but I have to stay focused and get the job done. Did you guys talk about in the locker room about having a chance to your Messi was scared in your own stadium? Does that motivate you guys? A chance of Messi was scared from the other chances on the radio. I didn't even pay attention to the Leo, do you come back often to Brazil? Do you have family there? Yeah, my whole family's there. What's your team in Brazil? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I mean, it's Palmeiras. just... Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now we know you're Bardal. <laughs> okay. All right. Is there a danger with, with, you know, Champions Cup, it's, it's such a big deal, and especially now that, you know, in the middle of this rivalry, uh, is there any danger in overlooking the game tomorrow? How do you guys stay focused on Colorado when you've got the Monterrey second leg on Wednesday? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been working this week after the Monterey game, working on the game Saturday already. It's, Next, next day, next page, and we focus on the game Saturday, get a win, and then we play Wednesday again.